Hello people, how are you doing? Today we are going to start with React Hook. I hope that you are enjoying this series and if you are doing so, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I will continue to share my learning, my experience with you so that you will learn faster. So today we are going to discuss with React Hooks. So you will be getting into the fundamental of hooks. Once you understand the fundamental of hooks, it will be much much easier to comprehend what each of these standard React Hooks are there to offer. We'll be talking about use state, use effect, use callback, use memo, use ref, all the standard hooks. And after that, we'll also learn how to write custom hooks. And once you follow this, you will be able to write a lot of custom hooks based on your need. But today's video, let's focus on learning the fundamental of hooks. Why exactly we need hooks? What are those? Those are not rocket science. Pretty, pretty easy stuff. Let's not get into the jargons. Let's try to understand things very, very simply. All right, so let's get it, get into the business. Again, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you. So in the introduction part of React Hooks, let's understand certain things fundamentally. What exactly we're going to talk about? What is the hook, by the way? That's the first thing we are going to talk about. That's the first thing we want to clarify today. This video is all about that, right? So before you think about hook, I want you to think about functions, JavaScript functions. Plain old JavaScript function. What exactly function? Bunch of statements together performing some task. Now one great thing about functions, what you know, that a function can have other function inside it. Composability. So a function can have one function, another function. That another function can have one more function inside that, isn't it? That's a great thing about functions, the composability. You can keep composing functions. In the previous video, we learned about one very fundamental point of JavaScript uh, React components. What exactly it is? In React.js, components are plain old JavaScript functions. We have learned this. Components are plain old JavaScript function, at least for the functional components. We are not talking about the class components. We won't be talking about the class components. That's we discussed before. So this is good. Now, if Components are plain old JavaScript functions and functions can take another functions, can call other functions inside, can do composability of it. That means if I take a component A, I will be able to compose component B inside that. I will be able to compose component C inside that. Isn't it? I should be able to do because components are nothing but functions. Okay, great. So with this particular understanding, then let's talk about something called stateless component. Now, what I have seen that whenever I talk about certain jargons like a hey, stateful, stateless, uh, the rhythm breaks. What is stateful? Stateful means a component which manages the state, which has some kind of state to kind of track. And there are certain things happen that changes the state. One pretty simple example, a count variable initialized with one. There is a button. You click on that. And every time you click on that, the count variable increases the value. So it has a state call count and it has a side effect that it is changing the state. The side effect is clicking on that button, which is changing the state by incrementing the count by plus one every time that you click, click on it. So a, a component like that is a stateful component because it manages the state. Now the Re in React, actually the component should be like a pure function. So what exactly a pure function is? A pure function is that it produces the same output for the same input. So if you pass a similar argument to a pure function, it will always result into the similar output. If you're new to pure function and side effects, I have created a video already. Please have a look into that. The link is in the description. Now, what is side effect? Side effect basically that change this phenomena of a function being a pure function. So there might be something inside the function that will force that function not to return the same output every time for the same input. So that is a side effect. Now how the React you know, proposes the design, the component design or the component hierarchy should be that each of the component as much as possible should be stateless. So it means each of the component as much as possible should be like a pure function. It should not have much of the side effects. But if we are building a real application, side effects are must. You want to make a network call and change something. You want to click on a button and change something. So without side effect, we won't be able to build anything which is like good and usable. But at the same time, we have to go by the paradigm of stateless component. 
So it means what we can do all the statefulness, we can park it to some other components, to some other functions. So the stateful logic can go into another function, another component. And my friend, that particular thing is called hook. Okay. So hook is nothing but another function, a plain old JavaScript function that has access to certain React specific things for managing states and side effect where you can actually take out your component state management side effect everything into that so that your component can be stateless as much as possible another great part about this stateful logic being a separate component is that the same stateful logic if it is required for another component you can reuse that how you reuse the function you can reuse that that exactly is react hook so a stateless component can have one two or three hooks how many hooks you want it can have Okay, so let's take some examples. So let's take a component and let's see it has some need, you know, for example, a need of data fetching, a need of logging into console, or maybe a need of searching and filtering. So each of these things, data fetching, logging and searching and filtering is something common, a common functionality. So first thing, first checkbox to check, reusability, common thing. Second thing as to fetch a data, after fetching the data or while fetching the data, whether, whether the data is loading, after fetching the data, putting the data into a data structure, you need a state. Okay. For searching and filtering, I'm searching on some search term. After searching, I'm getting a result. I need to store that result somewhere. You need a state. For logging also, you need a state. Now, all this stateful logic, you can take out from your component and put into respective such stateful components so that not only your component is now very very slick and very very tiny very very lean it is almost like a pure function but also all this logic that you're separating out are reusable are reusable hooks so you can have a component a now where you are using data fetching component b you are using the same hook same data fetching yeah so your reusability reusability is going on component c you are using the logging so that is great so that's what this hook is now, if I have to summarize, let her summarize. So React hooks are simple functions that we can use to separate out the reusable part of the functional components. It can be stateful and can manage side effects. As simple as that. React hooks are not rocket science. Those are simple functions doing some extra work because it has access to certain capability of React. Now, I want to inject one thought Many people in the beginner, in the beginner side, they think that why should I use a React hook? I can use a utility functions. I can create a utility function, put that common code inside that utility function, and then import and export that utility function wherever required. Why do I need a React hook? Now, if you have to think, there is a thin line. The thin line is the hooks has certain access to React capabilities. For example, the state, managing the state, managing the side effects your utility functions are very plain JavaScript function which doesn't have the access to that React capability straight away. That's a bigger difference. That's why you won't go for a utility functions in the React paradigm, rather you will go for writing a hook or using a standard hooks. Now, what are the standard hooks? The hooks, hooks that we are going to cover are use state, use effect, use context. These are the three primary things we are going to co cover and go in depth with projects. And then we'll be talking about use ref, use memo, use callback, use reducer, again with projects. Use layout effect, we will sneak in while talking about all these things. We may or may not do a project for this, but we'll definitely touch this, okay? Now, one more thing. I know what you're thinking. There is something called life cycle. Specifically, people who are coming from class-based component or heard about class-based component, you always talk about a lot of uh, life cycle methods like, you know, component did mount, component should mount, component unmount. There are various type of stages, various type of um, methods are there. And on those methods, you can actually can do certain things. So on these methods, you used to hook into, you used to hook into React's life cycle. With hook, we will be doing the exactly same thing. But our terminologies will be a little bit different. So the terminologies that we will be using when a component mounts, a functional component mounts, when the state changes of a functional component, when some props changes, 
The props are the ways to communicate between two components when it changes. When a context of store changes, just park it. I have not explained what context is was stored. I'm going to explain when I'm talking about use context and use reduce. So please, please park that for now. And the last thing would be when it unmounts, when the component unmounts. So all these cases, your component lifecycle and the hooks will come into picture. Now the first two cases, when it mounts and state changes. So the first thing that we are going to talk about, it mounts and state changes, where we'll be talking about use state and use effect. So the first one that we're going to talk about in the next video is called use state. Okay, so this video ends here. But what you are going to do now is like, let me know what is your understanding of React hooks in the plain English. So for that, please post a comment you know, below in this video and explain like what is your understanding of hook, React hooks in general. And if this video helped you to demystify certain things and to make you understand that React hooks are kind of simple things. Okay, that will be like really, really great feedback for me for explaining things in this video. So I'll be back again with the next video soon. Thank you. So was it useful to you? Now, do you understand what hooks are for? And those are really, really nothing but, you know, the JavaScript function that can manage the state and, you know, manage the side effects and things like that. If you got that, you will get rest of the hooks concept pretty, pretty fast. So the next hook that we are going to discuss is called use state. This is for managing the state, but along with the regular things, I'm also going to teach you and talk about some of the special cases of use state, right? So stay tuned for the next video that's going to come soon. Until then, take a very good care of yourself and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'll be back very soon with the next video. Thank you.